the movie Think Like a Man is from the book Steve Harvey. Yeah. Uh, what was it like working with Steve? And then you're like, Steve, bro, you giving all the secrets away, bro. Come on, now, <laughs> damn. Something we just gotta keep. We keep that amongst ourselves. Listen, there's a saying I know you don't know about. It's the game is to be uh, sold, not told. Exactly. Steve <laughs> sold the game. Yeah, man, come on, Steve. Steve, Uncle Steve said, I'm gonna sell it. If yeah. y'all, whether y'all appreciate it or not. <laughs> you know, I was one of the first people to call him about that book. I called him. And this is what, like, you asked about me living in Atlanta mm -hmm. versus living in L.A., right? I'm in L.A. a lot, working in Hollywood, but Atlanta's home. It right. puts me in a different uh, circle of people. Right. And what happened was I saw uh, sisters in the hair salon, and they were passing around copies of Steve's book, right? And you would have people like, hey, wait, bring my copy back. I didn't get to finish. It's my turn. Uh, hand it to me. And I saw that happening. I said, you know what? You're not seeing all the sales. They're passing this around. Right. So this book has a buzz and has a relevance that is hard to quantify. Right. You know what I mean? The publisher may not even realize that you sold one copy of the book, but 10 people read it. So I called Steve very early. I said, man, I want to turn your book into a movie. He mm -hmm. said, I, it's not even a, a narrative. He said, I'd have never imagined it as a movie. Right. Then it hit bestseller. Then right. he went on all the morning shows. Then he went on Oprah twice. Now everybody in Hollywood started calling him. To Steve's credit, he remembered the first dude that called him about that book. And he said, you know what? Everybody calling me to turn into a movie because the book's a hit now. I'm going with Will Packer. I'm going to go with the guy who called me first and said he wanted to turn this into a movie. I said, Steve, I'm not going to let you down. I got you. And we opened number one with that movie, too. Put Kevin Hart on the map in a different way. $96 million later, we did a sequel and, and got other stuff in the works as well. Man. It's that grind and that hustle, man. But that, you know what? That's, you know that that says it. something. That Steve, like all these other big movie studios yes. came in yes. and he could have easily like, you know what? But the bro man came to me early on. Yeah, he did. Because you didn't think it was going to do anything until all of a sudden I had peaked. See, I started going here. Now you want, when I was here, you weren't hollering at Nobody your boy. Calling. That's right. Right. Back then, didn't want me. But he definitely was, that's, that's who he is. You know what right. I mean? There was a loyalty there. He said, I'm going to give his brother a chance. He was one of the first people to call. And then I went with his blessing. Now right. I was able to go get a major studio on board. We made that with Sony, put an amazing cast together. Yeah, I'm looking at Kevin Hart, Taraji P. Henson, yes. Gabrielle Union, Chris Brown, Gina. Wendy Williams. Yep. Like I said, when you when you like, okay, I want to do this movie, got Steve's Harvey's blessing, studios have signed on. Now, how do you start to go about the cast? You got to get a good script, right? We had a script, and then it was who can be in it? Who can bring this to life? First person I wanted was Kevin Hart. Okay. I knew. Similarly, Hollywood wasn't checking for Kevin at that time, but similarly to the way I knew about Steve's book, in places like in Atlanta, right, mm -hmm. off the Hollywood grid, all people were talking about was Kevin Hart. They mm -hmm. were bootlegging his DVDs like crazy, right? Watching him. That's when YouTube was just starting to really pop, watching right. his videos and his, and his stuff over and over. And I would watch my kids watching Kevin, I was like, this dude is having a moment, but it's not like he's selling so many, you know, units of his comedy special. Right. So Hollywood doesn't really know how hot he is right now. Right. He was one of the first people I went after. Ran into him at the airport. I said, brother, I'm, I'm making the same thing. Same thing I did. I said, I'm making a movie. He knew a couple of my movies before, but we didn't really know each other. I said, give me a shot. Let me work with you to make this movie. I want you to star in my new movie that I'm making based on Steve Harvey's book. He said, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. And he gave me that chance, right? Because at that time, Hollywood wasn't coming after him, but he was hot in the streets, so right. to speak. I made that move. I said, I got you. Put him in the middle. And then it was about how do we put a great ensemble cast around. I'm so proud of that cast, man. You talk about Gab Union. You talk about Taraji. You talk about right. Regina Hall. You know, talk about Michael Ely and Romney Malco and Terrence J. Terrence J got that role. He wasn't even supposed to be in the movie. He showed up at the table read. I didn't have anybody cast for that role. Mm -hmm. We were reading it, right? You do a table read. Everybody sits around and actually acts out the script while you're reading it. Right. And Terrence J came in. I said, listen, I don't know that I can get you in this movie, but sit in for this part of Regina Hall's love interest in the table read. He was so prepared. He had studied so hard. He came in. Everybody else was reading their scripts. Terrence J didn't need a script because he had memorized the whole thing. He knew all his lines. He was completely off book, we call it, and he was acting his ass off in that table read, and that's how he got the role. Wow. He was willing to do what it took. You know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and become an official member of Club Shay Shay, where we do something before two something.